Hi, my name is Amiola, and the internet knows me as dark skinned female, and you're watching Alter Daily. Okay, so I'm a freelance TV presenter, producer, voice of an artist, model, but I don't re really like to call myself a model. I would rather call myself a muse. Um, I call myself the photographer's muse, so I do that. Um, I do communications, basically. I write copy. I do basically, you know, a basket of things under communications and media. Um, okay, so I started my media journey in 2012. Yeah, my first job was on the radio. I did this uh, overnight show on the radio. So yeah, that was my first media job. So say eight years. Freelancing, can I swear? Freelancing is a bitch because, or can be a bitch, and it can be beautiful at the same time because it's like, um, you get to do the things that you want to do. Um, I get to choose like content that I want to create. So when I was working with a media company and doing red carpets, like hosting red carpet events, I really hated it because I felt like, you know, I, I hate, like why am I asking people about what they're wearing and what their expectations are for the night? And like, like I hated it so much, but it was what I was hired to do. Like I was hired as a presenter and that was the show that was to be done at the time so I had to do it but today if you ask me to come and host a red carpet except I'm broke like I wouldn't do it do you understand but so I, I get I get to choose pick and choose the things that I really want to do I get to create content or do things that I'm proud to have my name behind as opposed to just like working for yeah <clears throat> but at the same time Freelancing means that there might be very long periods of downtime. So between this job and the next job, there's this whole period where you're trying to figure out what's happening with your life. Am I pulling up my hair? Am I killing myself today? Like, what's happening? But then, you know, I found you find a way around it. You find a way to just, like, sort of occupy yourself with something or the other. So I, I created, I started a business, and I started making body butters. And that sort of takes my time, even if it doesn't take all of my time as well. But you know, it's still it's something that I do. Like every every other day, I'm focused on my business, and so that's you know something to occupy my time. Um, yeah, but freelancing is beautiful. You know, it's beautiful. You get to live life on your own terms, as long as you find a way to handle the down times. It's a beautiful thing. How do you handle the down times? Like I said, I started the business. And um, yeah, so I take on other jobs that are like not exactly presenting. So even if there's a downtime, so I, I work freelance in a lot of things. So even if there's downtime in one thing, there might be some work in another thing, right? So if I, I'm not presenting now, I can get modeling jobs or I could get like uh, a job to produce something that's going to run for three days or something. Yeah. So yeah, there are little bits of that that happen in between. And now I'm taking on a nine to five. Well, not a nine to five per se, but just like a flexible job that would you know, take up most of my time and then I still have time to do my presenting. Um, so when people say they, when, when, when people model, mm -hmm. it's like, first of all, I, I don't necessarily do it for money so it's not like a commercial thing for me i do it for like oh more like art creation yeah. so if we're doing it for the arts then that's not exactly modeling right uh, we're just trying to create create stuff so that's not exactly modeling Ob obviously i do commercial modeling as well so people will see my pictures and say oh i want you to model my stuff and yeah i make money off of that yeah. but primarily i do it for art creation growing up like Obviously, growing up, people used to call me all sorts of names. Like when I was in high school, it's called me Blackie Chan, it's called me Black Mamba, <laughs> like all sorts of names. <laughs> but then, like it just, I just owned it, you know. My my first email address was blackami at yahoo dot com. Do you understand? So it's like, yeah, I'm black. Let's move on from that. And I and then one time I actually tried to look at myself and imagine if I was light skinned and if I would look as good as I look if I was light skin and I, I didn't see it. Yeah. Like I couldn't imagine it. So why not own it? Like 
why not and it's the skin i was born in to be honest i'm i'm very for loving yourself the way you are because i mean that's who you are first of all so like you're there's nobody who is like you like you're unique in your own way and you're you're um, what, you, what you think are your, um, what do they call them now? Your flaws, that your, your physical flaws are a part of your beauty in a way. So being dark skin is not a flaw. I'm not saying it's a flaw, but I mean, it's what makes you beautiful. When I started doing this whole media thing, it was, it was a bit alien to be like this dark skinned on TV. And I think that, you know, it wasn't really, I don't think that, my, there was a boss I had at the time, at, at the time, who I don't even think he thought about it. But one time we had like a misunderstanding, and he said, "How many, how many people have given dark-skinned people like you an opportunity to be on TV?" And I'm like, "Hmm, I didn't think it was anything, but like you felt like you were doing me a favor because I was like, yeah, that just rubbed me off a very wrong way." But yeah, it was, it was. It's not always been like welcome, but I feel like a lot of people have started to embrace their dark skin. Like there's a whole movement, you know, melanin and whatever. So yeah, I love it. I'm here for it. And I find people who tell me that they wish they were as dark as I am, or there are people who have bleached and say they wish they didn't, you know, so I'm winning. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so it was called um, Building, Building Bridges Campaign, right? Yes, Building Bridges Campaign. So it was like for, to promote One Nigeria. So basically to send a message across that before you are Yoruba or Hausa or Igbo, you're first Nigerian, you know, like we are all Nigerian, that's what we share in common before anything. So, so we did like a few, a couple of videos. One was a poem by D.K. Chukumirije that we did the dramatization to. And then three other short stories that just showed scenarios where um, our, our tribes separate us and unite us at the same time. Um, um, there's a show I'm, I'm working on, like, well, there's a show I did last year. Well, we recorded the season of, and I'm trying to translate it into a live event. It's going to, it's called, well, it, the show is called The Underground but I'm not quite sure what I'm going to dub it as. It's like, um, it's just like a live, a live session, basically. So it's where people can come and either sing or rap or do spoken word or do a monologue if you're an actor or paint if you're a painter, just whatever it is that you can create in the presence of people. Yeah, because I really like live creation and I feel that it's like, the people need to appreciate the process as well as the end product. So yeah, that's something I'm working on. Um, how do I feel about the Nigerian? Mu well, I listen to Nigerian music, so that means I really like it. Because yeah. if you're going back to like some seven years ago, you never find me with any Nigerian song on my phone. But um, I like the sound. I like how experimental people are, are getting these days. It's not like one particular sound that you hear all the time so i'm with it i love it um my name is amiola dark skinned female um i'm a freelance tv presenter producer body butter maker voiceover artist model slash muse um i don't know what else i've missed out but i've just been here and i've had a very nice chat with these guys and this is alter daily <laughs>